light in the darkness. That's who he is. The Alpha and Omega. One that has gathered us in divine presence this morning. How many believe he is? What his words say he is? Praise the Lord. We greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Trust in me. Everybody is happy to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that we have all come under expectation to hear from the Lord. Amen. We'd like to read out some thanksgivings before we pray. Looks like we don't have requests today. But we've got thanksgivings. Um, let's give a hand of praise for that. Um, Brother Nelson is saying, I would like to thank God and all the saints for their prayer. I am now healed from the back pain. As you give a hand. <laughs> um, then Thanksgiving from Sister Lucy says the child is well. Praise the Lord. Praise <laughs> Takuzo is saying, would like to thank all the saints through their prayers when I was not feeling well. The doctor said if they would have continued, the sores on my throat, it would take life away. But I believe, but I believe it was through your prayers that I am here today. So give a hand of praise. <laughs> and he's alive. And he's able to deliver what he promises. Man can fail. Our situations and circumstances may fail. But God cannot fail. So we thank the Lord so much for that. And then if you are here this morning, you've got a prayer request. Don't hesitate to raise your hand to the Lord. We're talking about this God that has answered these prayers. He is also able to answer your prayer if you can believe. I know many times it's difficult to trust God when things are not well. It's easy to confess that you trust him when all is well. When you are pressed by demons, the enemy is trying to put you down. It will take a little grace from the Lord for you to believe him. So you could be here. You're saying, Lord, help my unbelief. Right now, it may not be easy for me to trust you because I'm overwhelmed. But deep inside my heart, I believe that you are a rewarder of they that diligently seek you. As you whisper in your heart, as I'm praying with you, believe God for the impossible because he is able. Cast down all reasonings and imaginations that exalted themselves above the word of God. That voice that says it cannot be done. I'm here to silence it this morning. It can be done. With Jesus Christ, 
all things are possible if you can believe said whatever you ask the father in my name that shall I do Lord I shall be with you even in you unto the end of the world says nothing will be able to stand before you with us wherever thou goest and he said as I was with William Marion Branham I shall be with you only be strong and be courageous only be strong and be courageous he is able to lift you up from your situation and put you where no devil can touch you if you can believe there are untapped riches in the word there are places and promises that's ordained for the bride for this generation the key is faith if you believe you are able to unlock the blessings of God upon your life. Hear me and hear me well. This God is present here. And he's more than able to do what his word says he would do. You may fail to trust me as a man. But this God has no record of failure. Down through the ages, he has never put to shame any man that putteth his hope upon him. There is no record. Ask Hannah. She will tell you about it. Ask Abraham. He will tell you about it. Even Samson has something to say. You can talk to Jacob. He will tell you that this God is more than able. If you can believe Thank you, Lord. As you whisper your request to him now, as you express your need, hold it right now upon your heart as I'll pray. Say, Lord, this is my need. Thank you, King. Gracious, gracious Lord. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you this moment in time that we can approach you with much confidence. We can approach you with assurance. that you are alive forevermore. A God that cannot fail. A God whose word will never return back to him void, but to accomplish whatever that he sent it for. We know we are not heard because of our words or much speaking but you're looking into our hearts. Like Hannah could not even express herself through intelligible words until she was misinterpreted as drunk. But yet you could tell the language behind her tears, the language behind her groaning. You understood what she was going through, the pain, the suffering, the confusion you came for deliverance you lifted her up took away her shame and blessed her and here we stand this moment in time with such desperation looking at the age that we are living in how close we are to your coming and how the enemy is standing at the door determined to destroy Dear God, we need you more than ever. We may not be able to express ourselves appropriately, but Father, I pray that you strengthen our faith, that we can reach to your expectation. Because there's a target, there's a goal, 
there's a place you want to see your bride at. But we are weary. As we are born in sin, shaved in iniquity, we come to the world speaking lies. We often stray in our thoughts, words, and actions. But we are under expectation that he that raised Christ from the dead, if he is in us, is able to quicken these mortal bodies that they can be brought under the subjection of your word. And I pray that the sun may rise with healing in his wings in this building this morning. As it came at the beginning and brought forth botany life when you said let there be light darkness or void deformity everything was taken away and an Eden was created and we believe the same light that was shown in Genesis 1 has risen again in our day and we are praying father that them seeds that are lying in our earth, that gem, that gene of God, may it be quickened in the lives of every believer. Father, that we can see a supernatural life rising forth like botany life, shining the glory of God. Or you say, Arise and shine, for thy light has come. Dear God, you cannot demand perfection if there is no way to be perfect. And here we stand laying before thee. Oh God, I pray for every individual in this building. I pray for every hand. I commit every whisper that has been brought before divine presence. Dear God, may you raise us up transforming us, placing us, and anointing us that we can stand against the challenge of the hour. You know what your children are going through as individuals. You can hear the whispers. You can see the desire behind every raised hand. Oh God, I pray that you come and honor just once more. That, Father, we can get that final quickening to the rapture. That, Father, we can get to that position where we can have that influence without measure. Take away all that is not of thee now. Fulfill your purpose. Establish your cause. Dissolve all doubts and fears. Glorify your children with the glory that we once had before the foundation of the world. Amen. That we may know as we were known that we can walk out of that shell of religion and hatch into heavenly creatures. Dear God, I pray that you do away with routine, formality, and bring reality that we can all have an experience of that supernatural touch of Elohim. That is the reason we have come to church. We have not come for entertainment. We have not come, Lord, to fulfill a religious duty. We have come here because we know there is a promise that you shall meet with us here upon the word of Malachi 4 that you commanded to be stored in our age. Oh God, we thank you for bringing us thus far. Look at all the gratitude that has been expressed even this morning. How you have healed your various children. It's a sign that you are alive for the one that was doubtful. It's a sign that you care for those that were losing hope. Now I pray, oh God, as we appreciate you for the multitude of blessings and so many things that's not brought forward that your children are appreciating in what you've done for them. May you receive all the praise. 
May you receive all the glory. May you receive all the honor. And above all, guide us in that place where we can preserve your reality in our lives and see you every day in what we do. May you expose our hearts to your light today. Thanking you for the songs of Zion that prepared the service, the special songs. And now as we are switching segments, we are trusting King that we didn't come here for no reason. There is a purpose that you want to fulfill. May you impart us with life eternal. Thank you, King, for hearing our prayers. Thank you for hearing our whispers. Thank you for honoring this great invitation. Take us through the rest of the proceedings now. As we have observed all protocols, taken our position, come take your position to direct our lives and give us further instructions for this exodus that has just come to its end. Granted, King, we dedicate and commit all into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody, say amen. As we give a hand of praise. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you, friends. We may temporarily take our seats as we welcome you once more into the house of the Lord. And we deem it a grand privilege to be back again, saying there is no better place to be at any given time but to be in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. How many share the sentiments? Amen. So, I would like to acknowledge a couple of visitors before we come to the business of the day. Um, we've got um, Sister Rose and Lirato. We've come with uh, Sister Sindile. Um, I don't know where they are, if you could stand so that we can acknowledge you. All right. Let's welcome them. God bless you. You're welcome in our midst. You may take your seats. Praise the Lord. We've got uh, our Lani Mudawu. Our Mudawu. Praise the Lord. Let's welcome our Lord. bless you. Happy to have you in service. I've um, got uh, beauty. Na beauty. Sister beauty, I'm sure. God bless you. Bless you. All right. Is it the first time coming? All right. God bless you. She looks like somebody we know. Come again. All right. It's the first time coming this side. God oh bless you, young girl. Happy to have you in service. All right. We've got uh, uh, Dihale Gurley. Praise the Lord. All right. There she is. God bless you. Happy to have you in service. Amen. We've got Mafogo. Mafogo. Kame. Kamo. Kamohel. Kamohel. All right. All right. There she is as well. God bless you. Happy to have you in service as well. And we got Shungwani uh, RR. Shungwani RR. Praise the Lord. 
uh, outside. It's a she or he. It's a she. Or she's she's outside. Uh, let's walk a main absentia. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we've got um, Tashinga Mudzingwa. Tashinga Mudzingwa. Brother Mudzingwa's son. All right, there is Tashinga at the back. God bless you. I'm happy to have you. You're welcome. Praise the Lord. I don't know if there's anybody else who's coming for the first time that we have not acknowledged. All right, may God bless you. We, we are very happy. Mm-hmm. And then, um, There's a brother who wanted to be baptized. Is he here today? Mm. All right. I think he did not come. All right. And then uh, today, it's a special day. It's somebody's birthday. Amen. How many would want to know who it is? Praise the Lord. Little Adasa is telling one today. Adasa Tariro. Amen. Adasa Tari. Praise the Lord. So may God bless the little one. I think she's sleeping, is it? So <laughs> she can't even hear. Maybe when she grows up, she will hear me speak about it. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for all of that. And uh, last week, we had a wonderful time. We had our local ministers preaching for us. Following the Sunday service we had. And how many enjoyed the services? I think they were very good and we must keep on praying for our local ministers that God may be able to strengthen them. Um, I love the way they form part of the vision because it's important part of the vision. Praise the Lord. And then it's important that you find men that can stand like that. Um, and the whole church to join in. Because oh, Sister Lucy is here. God oh, bless you. Let's, let's give a hand of praise for Sister Lucy. <laughs> and the little one. Eh? Praise the Lord. I didn't recognize that she was there. We are happy to have her in church. All right. So I was talking about uh, people that form part that form part of a vision. Because there's an assembly before we come to the body of Christ. We've got a divine itinerary. divine itinerary. And then now God as he has led us in this age under the message of Malachi 4. And he's the one that is giving us grace to soldier on and deliverance over the spirits of the age. Because the enemy is not at rest is looking for ways to bring the church down. He sees how time is fast spent and is not ready to go to hell alone. He wants to recruit as many as he can so that he will not burn alone. It's not like the devil doesn't know that he's going to burn eh? He knows. That's why that time when Christ came, he said, are you coming before time? 
Although come a time where you will be powerless. And you can't do nothing. But now his scheme is the same that he had when he was in heaven. He took a third of the angels out of their God-given position. And he converted them to become what we call the present day demons. Because demons is angels that lost their first estate. And now when the war was accomplished in heaven and then Lucifer and his demons were cast out that same battle it was brought here on earth. Now it's no longer a battle of angels. It's now demons in men. Now this battle now is extended to you and I. That's why you must recognize there's a God-given position that you have. Place that God wants you to be. You see, like creation. You know, a tree is created for a purpose. You can't find a mango tree giving forth or bringing forth oranges. It means it has gone out of its place. If God wanted to make an orange tree, you would just make an orange tree, not a mango to produce oranges. You see, but you see, the trees are still obedient to the word of God. In the animal world, you never find a prostitute monkey. Meaning, nature is still in her position. And as long as they are in their position, God will bless. Because there is a purpose why he has made it thus. So even you as a believer, you are ordained for a specific purpose. But like a dark maze, a puzzle, but God like a dark maze God has put you inside of it that you may be able to find your way out you get the point so when you talk about a maze a dark maze it's like a, a puzzle where in you enter this way and then you are expected to come out that way. But in between, there are many paths. Paths. And then they lead to different ways. And you might find yourself back where you started. Instead of going forward. You get the point. But it will take grace for you to finish a maze, which is a puzzle, to come out at the right door. So that's life. God made you to be born, you know, as a vendor, as a, as a, as whoever you are today. And God is expecting you to walk your way out of that birth into God's picture that he heard about you before time began. Now, when you are born into this life, you are presented with many parts. Education, funzo, family, mita, work, mushumo, the environment. Mupo. You know, many things are presented. That's why you find diversity in the midst of those that are perishing. Because the devil has diversified himself. But God is one. And he has one way. So me is the diversity that the enemy has brought. You must understand that when one is a Mahomedan, another an African traditionalist, Another one a scientist. Another one a 
atheist. You see, all these people, they are lost in life, dark means. They took the wrong path. And they can never know as they were known. Because this path, you can't walk it alone. You can't use your intellect. Because when you do, you'll be caught up in so many things in this life. I think you agree with me. Before you made the message, some of you were living for money. You get the point. All that was in your and in your goals and achievements was I want to go to school, get a job, make money. That's all. That's where you stopped. Yeah. Am I correct? Some of you would say, no, my goal is just to be married. If I get old enough, I get the man that loves me and I'm married. That's all. And that was the end of your thought. You, you, that's where you thought you'd get satisfaction. But when this message came, it extended your vision. And it made you to see life a little more than the world had defined it. That there is life beyond money. There is life beyond a good job. There is life beyond a good marriage. And that's the world to come from whence we came. So now, through the message of Malachi 4, it opened to us a dimension that science could not open for us. Our parents could not open for us. Even the religious systems, they couldn't open that dimension for us. Because when William Branham came, he told us about a time when there was no time. Before God was even called God. You get the point. Let's talk. I'm sure there are times in your mind when you're growing up, you try to think who created God. How many have ever thought about that? Sure. You know, you, you get into those thoughts to say, but okay, they say there's God, but that God, where did he start? Who created that God? And any man that has not met with Malachi 4 is still struggling with those mind battles. Because the answer you have for such answers is such questions, right? Praise the Lord. Those are the answers that define your stand whether you're an atheist or you're a Mahomedian or you're an African traditionalist, you see? Sure. Because some, when they got that answer, it was also my great-great-grandfather is... You get the point. Now they start worshipping ancestors. Some hear about Mohammed. They start to worship as the Muslim. Buddha, you, you get the point. So now God came and he gave us the precise answers. And how do you know that it is the right answer? How do you know that it's true? That's a very good question. If a person comes and says, how do we know that your religion is true? How do we know that your church is true? There is only one way. The truth. Go. is able to set free. Praise the Lord. The Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth Go. shall make you free. So this word we have heard, it has not brought us into bondage to any system or man. It has allowed that the grace of God logged in us be unleashed. You, you get the point. Now that's what makes it true. And he that the son has set free, the word, the truth. 
It's free indeed. Somebody say amen. Do I have witnesses here? People that are no longer in bondage. But are walking in liberty. Under the leadership of the pillar of fire. Receiving instructions for every single day they live in. Somebody say amen. So this is the vision of the age. That gives us grace to overcome. Come. And now, as the local assembly, when we catch the vision now, now, now you see, it's, it's people, because God is not a denomination. You, you see the point? He's peculiar. And this peculiarity, it gives us victory in different locations under the same spirit. You, you get the point. Right here God under the message of Malachi 4 has ordained a five-fold ministry and the purpose is to equip you with supernatural knowledge that will give you victory against the spirits of your location. You understand that? That's the purpose of the fivefold ministry. That's the purpose of a pastor. Is to feed the flock. Now watch it. There is no way God will equip you with equipment that is irrelevant. This is not Los Angeles. We don't have the demons of the sea. Where people just walk with bikinis and, you know, there are certain demons that operate in certain locations. You, you get the point. You see coastal areas. We, we don't really have to deal with what they deal with there. Amen. Because in the coastal areas, you find a person at the mall with a bikini going to buy. You get the because the beach is just by the side. Now, God who equip men and women, part of the body of Christ, with sufficient equipment to deal with that. And those people must trust their pastor there. The man that's ordained to see them through. Because he carries the instruction for the assembly. To see them through in that location. You get the point. If they try to take it the way we do it here. They will take inspired things from an inspired God and they use them thinking they're inspired and they will fail dismally. And they say, but it's the word of God. Yes, it's the word of God, but not to you. Respect your pastor where you are because he's ordained to see you through. Not to say, I'm respecting the pastor on the internet and what he preaches then you fail somebody say amen now do you see what I'm talking about here now when we say you have caught the vision it's trusting God where you are that there is a purpose why you have made me thus why you have placed me here there is something you want to achieve out of my life and now when we together catch that from the pastor, the ministers, and the congregation. It is unlimited what God can do with us. It is unlimited what God can do with us. We will be one formidable unit. A unit that cannot be moved or shaken. Tight feet. Praise God. Now you see where the enemy creeps in. It's when people don't share the same vision. Then he can come to that one or through that one and cause confusion. But if you are one unit, somebody say amen. It's unlimited what God can do. And Satan will be powerless before you as a church of God. So may 
God bless you, friends. We thank God so much for this assembly, for local ministers, and those that caught the vision. Let's hold fast and press on. This is not the season to be apologetic, to feel pity for yourself. It's the season to recognize what the word has said about you step into it without questioning even any demon. Praise the Lord. Don't even ask Satan. Praise God. Somebody say amen. You know, some demons, they used to be surprised. When a believer would come and say, can I, can I be healed? How do I know? I mean, it's yours. It's, you know, you get the point. It's like you're a child of the house. And then your parents have employed somebody to take care of you. And then when that person is helping you, there's food in the refrigerator. And then that person has to eat according to instruction. But you are the child of the house, you eat anyhow. Then you start to be afraid to say, can I eat? <laughs> the person will be actually say, I should ask you whether I should eat, not you ask me. Because all these things are yours. I should ask you, should I eat? But when the child doesn't know and they keep asking, that person will start to act as if they've got rights. No, you don't, you can't. No, eat. That's what demons are doing. Christians have begged demons for too long. They've begged them. You get the point? Until now, demons feel that they have rights. You have to ask about your healing. You have to ask about your deliverance. No. Huh? Things must be the other way around. You don't take instructions from demons. Those are employees. The employer is Christ. Demons are working under allowance. They are limited in decision making. There is a great employer, the Lord. And you have been promoted above those spirits. So you are a, a supervisor, a governor. You must give instructions to them spirits. Not the other way around. Somebody say amen. And when you come to that level, when you come to the house of the Lord, you can't even sleep. No. Because you know your position. Praise the Lord. When I just started talking, everyone was seeing me. When I continue talking, the vision became hazy. Hazy. And then some began to see two pastors. And the interpreter becoming three. Become two and one again. And there's seven people in France. Until you can't see anyone. It means you are sleeping. Eh? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm politely talking to those who are even not seeing me now. Eh? I'm present. I'm present. Eh? God bless you. So we thank God. We don't have to be beggars. We are supervisors. We have control. If you want to try it, go and exercise it just to check whether what I'm talking about is true Satan is argumentative but yet he knows he carries no substance don't listen to his arguments you know what you want say it move forward. You get the point? If he wants to talk, tell him I'm not having time now. Keep on talking to yourself as I go forward. I got what I want. Somebody say amen. As a rise right prophet. God bless you.
we want to read a scripture. Um, um, last Sunday we're talking about uh, out of the depths of Satan into greater opportunities. And then untapped resources everywhere. Now, we were seeing, especially at the end of the service, that we do have a lot of resources a lot of resources that have not been utilized. A lot of resources that belongeth to us but we are underusing them. But God was giving us grace to make us see that these things are meant for us. And I pray as we continue forward, we, we must continue with that kind of enlightenment. And I want you to know that every preacher, when they preach, they are preaching for that purpose. When we preach history, it is to convince you about the position that God has given you. Whatever we are doing, just don't take it as a separate entity or a separate instruction. We are trying to arrive to one destination. And that destination is to say you are a child of God. You came from God and you go back to God. Even though you are trapped in time, your origin is not in time. You are capable of transcending dimensions and be where God has you to be. Are we together? So whatever we will be doing is based on that. Now we're going to read Luke chapter 1. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now the Bible said, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us. You know, these things that are most surely believed among us can only be made Sure, by the freshness that is in our hearts about the return of the Son of Man. Here, Luke, here, look, look, look. He is saying it's most surely believed among us because these people had just received a Messiah and they had walked with him. So their faith was sure. They were confident. They were not assuming or presuming. For them it was not a religion because they had handled him. They were eyewitnesses of his majesty. They went up the mountain. They saw him transfigured. They saw him ascending. You see the point. So to them it was a certainty. You get the point. This message or their message was a certainty. They were certain of God. And I pray that even ourselves we are certain of the message of the hour that we received the revelation of the son of man through a son of man. Is it right? And that revelation is fresh. We are not disputing the cloud. Glory. We are not disputing the pillar of fire. We are not disputing Malachi 4. It's something that is 
most surely believed amongst us that we are in the third and final exodus and the rapture is certain Israel is in the homeland what we are waiting for is the translation now notice when we talk about Russia the bomb that will rip this civilization and destroy it in you know in this Armageddon battle when you talk about the sinking of Los Angeles, the building of the temple in Jerusalem, these things we are just preaching. But none of us who is part of the bride is going to witness those things. We will be gone. The moment you hear that Los Angeles is sunk underwater and you are still here on earth, when you hear that Russia has bombed America and Rome, you, you get the point. When you hear that there is now a war between Israel and many nations. Just know you are left behind. Because those things, we are going to look at them through an area of view. Is that, is that right? We won't be in this dimension. We'll be looking at the chaos that will happen amongst the word rejectors. The people that rejected this message as you go out to testify them. That's not a church program. Because some people come thinking they are coming to fulfill a church program. That's not my program. That's an instruction from the Bible that you go out and testify. And those people are not rejecting your church and your pastor. They're rejecting your God that has called you to this message. Because you are not representing me. You are representing the God that spoke where, to you where and called you out of denomination. Somebody say amen. 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 These things yes, are most surely believed among us. So, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. It seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. That thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Verse 4. Praise the Lord. My subject will be knowing the certainty of the things that we have been instructed. Knowing the certainty of the things that we have been instructed. How do we know? According to Luke, he has perfect understanding of all things from the very first. And now he is writing an orderly account to Theophilus. Is that right? And that orderly account is what must bring certainty in the things that Theophilus has been instructed to do. Are you understanding that? Certainty is flowing out of 
an orderly account from a person that knoweth all things because he was a witness of all that happened in the life of Christ. That's why when you come to verse 5 it starts with the birth of John who was a forerunner of the Messiah. Are we together? Meaning he started to show not the birth of Christ but before the birth of Christ. And when you come to Luke 24 it ends with the ascension of Jesus Christ. Is that right? So you, you see the account that was written in this book is telling us before Christ was even born and the time he was born up until his ascension and the experiences in between. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we do give thanks. Come through and interpret your word for the sake of your children. We know you need no interpreter because the fulfillment is the interpretation. May you take away slumbering the demon of sleep, Morpheus, that it may not plague your church. Even those who are tired, give them supernatural strength that they may be able to stand through the service. We know it's very hot, but Lord, you can create an atmosphere for us that these words can be so real until we cannot afford to doze. Please grant it to us that we may not be robbed of the sacrifice to report for duty. But Lord, it may be fruitful in our lives, our families, and all that we do. Yes. We dedicate all into your hands. You take me as the preacher. Hide me behind the cross of Calvary. Amen. I have no thing that I can give to your children. I'm depending on you. That you can put me aside and borrow my lips. and Bring to pass you know, what you require as you suspend my reasoning. I dedicate and surrender all into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody say Amen. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Let's take our seats. Amen. Now, you have seen already in the book of Luke, he was a doctor. He's the writer of the book of Acts as well the companion of Paul and he was of a Jewish ancestry. Is that right? And um, he had um, first-hand information. He walked with Christ and he interacted with people that walked with Christ. And not only that, he also was a companion of a man that was ordained to be the usher of the Gentile dispensation. And that's St. Paul. And because of that, and many things that we can speak of, you begin to see that Luke was well versed with what he was writing. He was not sitting down looking for imaginations and thoughts so that he could write something. But he was talking about what he saw. You get the point. Now, I've often given an example that uh, you know, there are people that can be asked one question and they answer it the same. Yet they are not lying. But their answer does not depict the reality of the question. I can come and I ask you how many has visited uh, President Ramaphosa's house? Or how many people know that house? 
you know, everybody may raise their hands there. I know the place. You see, and we have three t- types of people, even four. First one was, I saw it on the news. That's how I know the house. Another one will say, no, I heard about it. That's how another person can speak. You get the point. Another one will say, you know, we drove past the place and I saw the house. I know the place. I saw it with my own eyes. And the last person will say, I got into that house. I sat right there. And I saw everything. You, you get the point. So the last person has the best understanding in as far as this question is concerned. Even though everybody else would answer and say, we know. Now the same applies with the knowledge of God. Because Luke was writing about Jesus Christ. The word and God. So he could not write about somebody that he did not know. When he speaks and he says that understanding all things how does he mean? What, what, what is he trying to express? Now, how do you know Christ? Do you really know him? Some will say, I read about him. Some will say, my parents talk about him. Some will say, I go to a church where they preach about him. Some will say, I know him. Not that somebody pointed but I've, I've met with him. I speak. I spoke to him. Now we're talking about the knowledge itself. Somebody say amen. Are we together friends? Now this man talking about Christ, talking about the word, his knowledge is to give us certainty in the things that we have been instructed. Because when Christ left, he gave them an instruction that after his departure, they must create a race like him. You get the point. And there is power to that regard that will enable them to carry out the instruction. So now when he left, people needed certainty over the things that they were instructed. That are these things real? And that is the purpose of this gospel. Not only the purpose of this gospel, but the purpose of our preaching is to bring certainty in the things that were instructed. That these are not cunningly devised fables, but is the true living word of God. And if you follow, praise the Lord, if you can bring the subject, if you follow the very instruction that you have been given with the knowledge of its certainty, there are great results that you must reap. Praise be to God. Now friends, it's not going to help us to sit down and criticize other churches, the denominations, and the prophets that are mushrooming every day. Yet we don't carry the substance of our profession. Did you get the point? I don't get value by devaluing a Pentecostal. There I only get a mental whitewash. I'm trying to, to deal with my conscience to brainwash myself that all is well. You, you get the point? You know, it's funny actually. You, you, you see the demographics, cultural demographics, if you look at maybe a nation, 
or the world itself per se, you, you find that there are certain people that feel superior and others that feel inferior. And the superior, they carry the superiority complex by looking at the inferior. You get the point. You get the point. The white men who say, I'm the boss in Africa. I brought civilization. They can't do anything without us. They use our language. Even though they claim they hate us. But look at the way they preach. They're using our language. They teach their children with our language. And they even regard literacy based on our language. You get the point. So we are superior. That's why we influence them. You get the point. Sure. And then now they feel superior. Now the blacks all become inferior. They feel inferior. Even if they're at school and one of their student, fellow student is a white person who's even speaking broken grammar. You get the point. They will still feel that person is wiser than them. Because they are in white skin and they speak English with a white accent. And then everybody else feels like he's, he's number one. But, but yet it's not the case. The, the, the black man feels inferior. But yet when you look again, the, the, the blacks amongst themselves, because they all feel inferior, they still have a desire of superiority. So then they start to look for the inferior amongst themselves. To say, oh, all right, okay. we are all inferior. So the Zulus will say, we look down on the Tosas. Say, now we are superior ourselves. And their superiority is based on looking down on the inferior. Not because they are superior. They are still the same blacks that are looked down upon by a white man. You get the point? And yet the Tosas, they'll feel like, no. Yes, we are being abused by these Zulus. But we are also going to look down on the pages. And they feel superior now. You, you get the point? You see the superiority. The pages will look, say, no. We look down on the vendors. The vendors will look on the song. You know, it goes down. The list keeps going down. But the superiority is not based on understanding, on reality. It's looking down on the other person. Now, as a message believer, you must understand that your superiority, your greatness, is not determined by how low the denominations are. You get the point. And you're not going to study them and disqualify them and see all the wrong that they're doing. And then you say, because of that, I am something. Because at the end of the day, after all is said and done, and there's no more superior or inferior, we all have to answer whether we carry substance or not. Then you begin to find out, I don't have substance. I never had anything. I sustained my Christian walk by magnifying the negativity in my contemporary. Mm. Somebody say amen to that. But as believers, let's be sober. Do we know him? This Christ we are preaching, are we sure of him? How much do you know about this God? We thank God for Luke. He wanted the people to know the certainty of the things that 
they were instructed to do. And we thank God for his spirit. Because it's here as well to bring that certainty whether we know him or not. And when we do, we must show by the confidence we have over the instruction that was given us. Somebody say amen. Now we have traced the account in the book of Luke. It's talking about the natural life of the Messiah when he was expressed into time. Is that right? But now when you come to our day, we are not going to write an orderly account like Luke. Praise God. Is that right? The account that we require is a spiritual account. It would include the humanistic element of God but yet it goes beyond the humanistic like I just mentioned when William Branham came he made a declaration that Moses made somebody say amen all the people were stuck in Egypt do we agree for 400 years they were in a foreign land Praise God. Yet they were a chosen nation. Born to be peculiar. Born to have dominion. Born to be the headquarters of the entire universe. You, you get the point. But when they were in bondage, they lost vision of their origin hence losing track of their identity because without the knowledge of your origin you never understand your identity because identity is connected to origin somebody say amen we call you a human being because you are born of a human being is that right? we call a dog a dog because it's born of a dog its origin defines it. So now these people lost track of their origin. Hence they did not know their identity. So these 400 years made them to behave like Egyptians. Praise God. Because they stayed there for long they lived like them. Amen. Started with the diet. So, Eating like the Egyptians. Onions and cucumbers. Nothing wrong with that. Went on to their music. Started to listen to the music of the Egyptians. They're forgetting where they came from. You get the point? It went on to the dressing. They started dressing like the Egyptians slowly but surely. You get the point? Because they were losing focus. They lost track of their origin. And they had no identity. You see the point? That was a terrible thing. A terrible thing. Sure. Very bad thing. Is that right? But God rich in mercy. He sent Moses as an exodus prophet to take them out of that state. And how did he do that? Observe clearly. He introduced to them the God of Abraham. Now, when they hear the word Abraham, it was supposed to stretch their memory. It was challenging their mentality because many of them were saying we are Egyptians we are born in Egypt praise God that's what they were saying because they were born there sure even today it happens brother mm. 
Some people in America are called Americans because they're born in America. Not because they're Americans. Because we know all blacks, they come from Africa. But they went through slave trade. And their great great grandparents died in America. And another race began to propagate in America. And today when you talk to them, the black Americans say, do you know Africa? Say, you mean that country? They think it's a country. Some are asked who's the president of Africa. I'm talking about black Americans. You say that on social media. They don't know Africa. But yet they're Africans by descent. If you trace, they came from this place. But they've lived in that land for too long until they've forgotten who they are. They live like Americans. They dress like Americans. They do everything like Americans. That's what had happened to Israel. So they had to come in there now that they had to challenge their thoughts. Some men that had to challenge their intellect to tell them about a life beyond the land they were in. That is what Moses did. He said, I'm coming from the God of Abraham. And now when they start to look for Abraham, there was no Abraham in Egypt. They can't see him. So meaning their mind must go back beyond Egypt to find that Abraham. And when they go back beyond that and find Abraham, they'll find their origin. And when they find their origin, they'll know their identity that we are not Egyptians. If Abraham was our father and we came from him, it means we are not Egyptians. We are children of God. Sure. This example of Israel and the Americans can be clearly the example about Christians. Sure, brother. Many of us, we are stuck in this dimension. Am I talking to somebody today? Do you understand when an American, a black American doesn't know Africa? Even the way the, everything is, because remember, it's Thousands of years ago. <laughs> so you can't expect them to feel like they're Africans. You get the point? Mm. Hey. Now, you feel for them. Sure. Hey. It's not their fault. They've just been in that land for too long. Now, the same applies with Christians. We were born in this dimension of time. You have stayed in this flesh for long to a point that you identify yourself with this body, with this world, with this dimension. That sometimes if you go out and tell people about heaven, it's nothing like heaven. What is heaven? What are you talking about? There is no God. The earth started by the Big Bang. Big Bang Theory. In it, that's how the atheists believe. Because it was just an explosion. And everything started. They don't believe there is God. As they say, there is a higher power somewhere. But if you talk about heaven, they can't believe it. It's like the black Americans. To even say, who's the president of heaven? They'll say, ah, you are the preacher saying, I am the superior of Gabriel or something like this. I think I've heard some nonsense like that. I think you've heard about it. Some, they give themselves in heaven. I'm, I'm, I sit close to Michael and what, what. It's like an American trying to say the president of Africa is Mugabe. Because <laughs> they think Africa is a country. So that's how the Christians look at the heaven. 
They've been here for long. And they can't recognize it. Somebody say amen. So the Israelites would have never understood their identity without that quickening knowledge that was brought by an Exodus prophet. He's the one that awakened them to God's instruction. He's the one that refreshed the certainty of that instruction. And how did he do that? He gave them an account, an orderly account that started from their origin. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now they see Jacob. Oh, Jacob is the one that came here. And he said, let not my bones be buried here. Let them go back to Canaan. Now they begin to see. Amnesia was dissipating. Now they start to see who they were. Somebody say amen. So Moses gave them an orderly account. And that brought certainty. The instruction that Moses caught from the prophecy given to Abraham. Is it Moses the one that wrote Genesis? Is that right? Praise God. And God said, your seed shall be in a foreign land for 400 years. And after that, I'll punish that land. And then I'll take them back to their own land. You get the point? That was an instruction logged in Abraham. But Moses, who was not alive, by the Spirit of God, God brought him back to that time. And he made Moses to hear the conversation that Abraham had with God. Moses was not there. But it was the prophecy that caught that revelation of the conversation of God and Abraham. And when it was brought to the Israelites, it gave them strength to follow the instruction to come out of Egypt. There was satanity now in the instruction. Because of that account, are we together, friends? Do you see what we're talking about? Amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to be bringing these many types so that you see. Because many times we assume that people know their identity when they do not. We assume it's an assumption. Because sometimes when you see a sister wearing a long dress, <laughs> you, you just assume they know the message. Mm. Sometimes when you see a brother saying, God bless you, you know, giving you you know, but this one, it doesn't die. Eh? It's tough, this one. Eh? You know, if you are failing on this, let me advise you. It means there are many traditions you are holding on to. Sure. Can you tell me something? What are you doing when you do this? I don't know. Maybe you've got an answer. <laughs> Praise God. It's a tradition, brother. All I know is goats are the ones that hit each other's head like come again every time. But sheep, they don't do that. Sheep, they hug one another like you, you get the point. I'm trying to shake things here. Praise God. Mm. If I was a visitor for the first hour, how do I know what these people are doing? Everyone is just hitting the other's head. Eh? Go. 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 Oh, raise my head. What are you doing? Show, sure, brother. You must understand what you're doing. And you must know why you are doing what you're doing. The Bible says that greet one another with a holy kiss. Is the right? And that's how they used to do. A brother who would greet the brother and kiss the neck. That's what they did in the early church. You get the point? But now look at how it is fragmented from the time of Paul to where we are. Now it's no longer a holy kiss. It's a head. Sure. 
But when you go back to the word, you start to know now the way I'm in misinterpreting greeting. Is it not the way I'm misinterpreting the spoken word? Just a mere greeting. Say amen. amen. Yeah. Others they give each other the cheek here. Praise the Lord. God bless you, sister. God bless you, brother. A brother, that's not a tradition. In this church, if you want to greet me as your pastor, I'm giving you an instruction now. If you want to greet me, greet me nicely like this. Yes. I don't want mistakes, eh? And end up with something here. You get the point? Greet me like that. But those who want the other one, I greet them like that. I'm not saying change with others if they want it, keep it. Praise God. I must understand what we are doing. You must understand what you're doing. You, you understand the point? When you're wearing a long dress, do you understand why you're wearing a long dress? Sure. We've got people that just wear it. Even ZCCs, they wear long dresses. Muslims, they wear long dresses. But you as a believer, why are you wearing a long dress? Can I tell you some of the answers? Why do you wear long dresses? Oh, it's the law of our church. <laughs> That's what we're doing now. It's the law of our church. We are not allowed. Who doesn't allow you? We have no law but love. Mm. Who say don't wear the law in this church wear long dress? We don't have a law. You wear a long dress because you respect your body. You wear a long dress because you observe what the Bible is saying. That a woman must dress themselves in modest apparel. So when you answer the unbeliever, don't tell him it's about the church. It's your conviction in the Bible. I wear a long dress because I believe the Bible. Sure. Why do you do that? If it's about the church, well, if we close the church, what will become of you then? We'll close the church. Then you'll start to wear miniskirts. Because for you, it's the law of the church. If you go where the church is not there, then you'll leave anyhow. Did you get the point? How much do you know this message? And your God. Why do you do what you do? Somebody say amen. Now when Moses came, he was dealing with these things. And how did he do it? So this is what we are coming into. Because assumptions will lead to assumptions. Is that right? Assumptions will lead to assumptions. Now, when you come to the church ages, now this is where I'm bringing it. We're saying knowing the certainty of the things that we have been instructed. Now, look. 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 Yes. Look. I don't know. Look. 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 Luke. Praise the Lord. He gave them an orderly account. And it brought them to that. Now there's a diagram. If the brother can bring it. Praise the Lord. Which I want you to look at. Is the same diagram we've been using. And that's why I thought. It is important. For us to come to this. Now we see. This diagram is divided into the church ages. Ephesus to Laodicea. The messengers Paul to Branham. The seals the white horse rider to the pale horse rider which is the first to the fourth seal. Is it right? And the anointings, the four living creatures from a lion 
to a flying ego. Is that right? Now, when you look at this diagram, now, it's an account. It's an account that you and I must understand so that we can recognize the certainty of our instruction. Now, Luke gave them from the birth of the Messiah. Is it right? Up to the ascension of the Messiah. But this diagram, hey, diagram is it right? This is genealogies. Is it right? Is it right? Now, here this is the time of the birth, not of the Messiah, but the church. Is it right? And the time the church is raptured. If you look in your Bible, the book of Luke, the birth of Christ, it ends with his rapture. When he, was when he ascended. And now when you come to the church ages, it is the birth of the church. Is it right? Is it right? And the up to the rapture of the church. And Luke says here, it seemed good to me having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou has been instructed. Somebody say amen. So where you stand right now in this end time for you to know the certainty of these things you need a man that will give you that account. An orderly account. A man that is perfect understanding of all things. Praise God. Revelation 10 7. The Bible says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, all the mysteries should be revealed as he has declared to his servants the prophets. Is it right? Now, who is this man? Revelation 10 7. Who must come as the seventh angel? Is a writer who must bring the mystery of God and finish it. Who is that man that know all things from the beginning to the end? We need that man for us to have certainty in the things that we have been instructed. If that man is not there who knows all things, we will doubt, who will presume, who assume. Praise God. But when he comes upon the scene, like Luke, and give an account, it must do something in the body of believers. Praise God. As a pastor, I'm tired, brother, of people that are following a religion. I'm tired of that. Because if ever it's religion, this is not even the best. If it's, we're talking about religion, I would support the Muslims. Now they know religion, those ones. Muslims. Brother, if a Muslim girl, girl ma gets married elsewhere out in the world, do you know what they'll do? They'll kill her. Am I correct? Sure. Not only disown a killer. Mm. That's how they hold on to their religion. I'm sure there was a case in court where another Muslim was being you know, questioned over that. He had killed the daughter. And he was saying, I'm not afraid to go to prison. I've done what is right according to the Muslim religion. My daughter embarrassed the family. And because of that, she must die. You get the point? He was not even apologetic. Now, these are religious, religious men. They know religion. So if you want to be religious, 
Let's close the door and go to the Muslim. But if we are not ready to be religious, we need the reality of this message. It must be alive in the heart of the believer. Every man, every woman must walk with reality. Sure. Amen. I would have failed as a pastor if I present a bunch of religious people before judgment. I would have failed if all I can give to God is long dresses but people filled with lust in their hearts. No! I would have failed but when I have made it before God is when believers can have a true spiritual relationship with God to know their God to be certain of their God to understand what they are walking into. Sure. If we remain like this, what will become of our children? <clears throat> our children will be like the Israelites or the black Americans. And for them, they just say, oh, we are born in this church. <laughs> yes, our mother was like this. We are just born like that. So they don't even understand anything. To them, they just say, we are born in this place. Say, Do you know the pillar of fire? Have you met with God on your knees? On my knees? You mean I can meet with that God on my knees? Your children will be asking you those questions. Why? Because they're entering in a religion. But when they see mama kneeling down at home until the spirit of God comes upon her, when they see Papa locking himself praying until he comes out with that says the Lord to say my family we're having a problem. We did not know which direction to go. I have gone in the, on the mountain. Not the mountains in Veda. Upon my knees. Praise God. And God has heard my prayer. He's saying we must go that direction. And that direction. Now we are talking about people that will leave their children an inheritance that is real. Show, sure, brother, that son who know that when a problem comes, I must lock myself in that room. When a problem comes, I must cry like mama does. And I know I will get an answer. Amen. That's what we are talking about. Parents that do not initiate their children into the message. This is not a cult where you initiate your children to be message believers. Now it's Sunday. Wear a long dress. Wear a long dress. It's Sunday. Sunday. Wear, wear a long dress. Wear a long dress. Remove that thing in your hair. Remove it. Remove it. Remove, remove. We are going to church now. You are initiating children. They don't have understanding in what they are doing. Praise God. They must meet with the God of reality. That was the burden of William Branham. He was meeting the angel of the Lord many times, many places. But one day, Billy Paul was sleeping and Brother Branham said to the angel of the Lord, please, can my son see you? It was his burden that Billy Paul must have a reality. And the angel said, yes. Brother Branham woke Billy Paul. And he saw the angel of the Lord. I need to wake up my son to see the God of sin. I need to wake up my daughter to know the God that speaks to me. Then we know we are going somewhere. Praise God. It has to be that way. It must be that way. No one is too young to know God. No one is too old to meet with God. Every believer in this church must have an experience with the pillar of fire. Look, new old things. And this angel, 
wewe mruwa is supposed to know all things and it will give him the confidence to declare to us an orderly account that we can have certainty in the things that we have been instructed. Sure, we must qualify our money. Yes, before we go to buy. I just come into a land and then somebody just says, use this, you go with a paper and then you are arrested. You qualify the currency. Is it the real currency? When you go to buy, you have assurance that you're going to come with what you want. Because you have realized it's not a bogus dollar or a bogus rand. You get the point. But before you are sure, don't go and buy. Because you'll be arrested. If you are caught with fake money, you explain after you have slept in the barracks, day in the, in the prison. Mm. Come and explain your issue now. Say, no, I was given, but they will arrest you. One million of fake runs. One million at the rand that's a fake. There is no discussions there. Where did you get that money? So when you're not sure, don't go to buy. Don't go to a bank. Because you'll be arrested. Mm. So when you see a person not buying, they are not sure. Sure. Hey. The reason why you don't use this message. They're not sure. Is it really from God? Ah, this message. Is it different from my church I left? This prophet. What's the difference between him and Bushiri? Hey. You know, sometimes it pains me, you know. <laughs> when I see people comparing William Branham with this modern prophet. Yeah. Uh, another man, you know, said that to me, you know. But I respected him, you know. Yeah, I respected him because, because I was trying to testify the message. And then that was back home in Zimbabwe. And then he says, um, you know, yes. Your prophet did a lot of good things. And then I was showing him all the experiences and all when we were talking. And then he said, you know, but you know, my prophet is still alive. You can come and meet him as well. And then he told me the name of a renowned prophet in Zimbabwe. He's doing all these things that your prophet did many years ago. I can't blame him. So later on, I had to use the knowledge of the word now to show him that I don't mean it that way. This man is not a prophet of America. No, he's not a prophet of, of, of South Africa. He's a prophet of the age. Can I bring that back again? William Branham is not the prophet of Africa. William Branham is America. He's the prophet of the age. The entire age is under that light. Praise God. Any light you follow will not lead you to Christ. Oh brother, there were many stars in the time of the wise men. There were many stars but they followed a certain star. The, that star will lead us to the baby Christ. Somebody say amen. There are many preachers brother, but there is only one star in this generation that if you Follow that star, you lead you to Christ. Amen. Amen. Other stars will leave you in a church. Other stars will leave you in a bank account of the pastor. Other stars will lead you in the mortuary. 
You get the point. But it is tough for this generation. Malachi 4. If the servant in the right hand of God, if you are a wise man, you are able to separate the staff. That one is not of God. That one is not the one that will guide me. The staff that is ordained to lead me is that one. And when you follow it, it will lead you to Christ. The wise men were led to Christ. But that star may pass through Jerusalem. But it's not going to stay in Jerusalem. The people that stopped before they arrived, even in this message, they were following the star. You know what those men did? But praise God, they were too wise. Is it right? Mm. And you know where they came from? Babylon. To the Messiah. For a real wise person will be taken from Babylon to the Christ. Is it right? Now, when they were moving, watching the star, you know what happened? Then there was noise of, ah, praise God, hallelujah, amen. Praise God. And then when they saw that, they stopped looking at the star. So, ah, so this is the place where the star was leading us. There are people that are praying, worshipping. They lost focus and they went inside. <laughs> and they went to those who were praying. Tell us, where is he? King of the Jews. What are you talking about? Is there a king that must be born? The people that were worshipping had no idea about the revealed will of the day that God had revealed through the Zodiac, the first Bible, that a child must be born. But these people had no knowledge about it. Yet they were praying. Yet they were pastoring. Yet they were wearing long dresses. But yet they had no knowledge about the revealed word of the day. Then when they saw these people did know nothing, they realized we missed it. Our eyes were supposed to remain on the star until the end. They couldn't see it until they left. Jerusalem. Jerusalem. When they walked out of Jerusalem, the city of worship, the star appeared again. What does that mean? You mean people saw religion. They stepped into it. The star disappeared. But when they went out, they saw the star again. What does that mean? Babylon and denomination is the same thing. The star cannot stay there. Somebody say amen. So when they came out of Jerusalem, they saw the star again. And it led them to Christ. The child. Somebody say amen. You must follow this message all the way. Until the end. Don't rest upon anything. But the rapture. As long as you are alive, challenges will come. Demons will fight. But you still hold on to this message. Somebody say amen. There is no way you will never stop fight, stop to fight. If you are in this message and you stop fighting, you must be reminded you are deceived. There is no lie that is greater than that one. When you receive the message, it's the beginning of war. It's the beginning of challenges. You fight till the rapture. Somebody say amen. No promises here, fake promises. Ah, when you just accept, everything will be well. Money will flow in your account. No things. Will. No, brother. When you receive him, challenges will begin. Amen. Where 
wherever he is, there is persecution. When he was about to be born, kids were killed. Why? They were hunting for that life. Moses is the same, hunting for that life. Even right now, demons are hunting for that life. If it's in you, demons will be after you. Because you are carrying the life that can make a difference in your family, in your neighbors. You get the point. So the devil is always hunting for that life. So you must know trials will be there. Challenges will be there. Temptations will be there. You must keep following the star until the rapture. If it doesn't happen next year, you are ready to fight the updated demons. If it doesn't come next year, we are still ready to fight the demons of that hour because it's a constant war until the end. You keep faithful to that star. No matter what happens, always look up. Somebody say amen. Are we together, beloved? So this is the star. Now this star is what brings this illumination. Is that right? Because you, you, you are going to see as we are moving forward. That this message given by Malachi 4 it had a purpose for the bride. Now, when you come to this diagram, maybe I'll read a, a scripture. Revelation 1, verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sowest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sowest are the seven churches. Now, I want you to notice, friends, it's an interpretation of the vision of the Son of Man in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. He had seven stars in his right hand. Is that right? And then now, John is getting the interpretation. And John, you know, in the book of Revelation, is the type of the bride. And he receives an interpretation from an angel that knows all things. It's that angel that gives him an orderly account. And he says, this lampstands, it's seven church ages. From Ephesus to Laodicea. It's talking about the Gentile dispensation. That's why on this diagram, as you see, it starts. It has dates from AD 53 to 2019. We are still in the Gentile dispensation. Now, when you read these church ages in the book of Revelation, you must know its dispensations. It's not local assemblies in that era. But it's things that are and that will be thereafter. You get the point? So it was a prophetic message showing now how the church which was born out of Christ will have its lifespan. Christ was born preceded by John the Baptist. He lived his life. He 
fulfill this portion of the word and he finished his ministry and when he finished his ministry he gave birth to a church like Adam gave birth to Eve out of his ribs you get the point and then now the bride that Christ left here also had an itinerary like Christ had an itinerary is the point? Chimbiri. Is that right? An itinerary. To say you must walk like this. Is that right? Christ fulfilled his. Is that right? You as the bride, you've got yours. Somebody say amen. Now, when they were told in their time, the itinerary of Jesus Christ, it brought certainty to the believers of that hour. Because it was spoken by a man that had experienced and was an eyewitness. And even today, when we see the same itinerary, somebody say amen. It must do something. It must quicken someone. It must open another world. Because before you understand this, before you understand this, you must understand that this is the earthly expression of the bride of Christ. That was what in eternity with Elohim. But this earthly journey is yet to take away amnesia by the experiences of men and women of like precious faith. That when you see how Paul walked, how Irenaeus walked, how Martin walked, it must show you you are of the same pedigree, the same genes that were in this man of older must be inside of you. Then you will be sure that this money can work. You will be sure that this message can work. You can use it at your home, at your workplace. You will stop you stop underusing this currency that you are having. Like I've mentioned, the reason why you are doing nothing is because you don't believe that this money would work. You feel like you'll be arrested. Hey, demons will catch me. I'm afraid. You're afraid to be taken hostage by demons. That's why you let a struggle as you walk in your house. And you say nothing. You run, you cover yourself with blankets. When your child is about to die, you're looking for another man to assist you. Yet you're holding something in your hand that can deal with it. The problem you don't trust what you're holding. Moses, what is in your hand? When you call me as the pastor to pray for your child at 2 a.m., you must know the currency I'm using is the same one you have in your house. Sure. I'm not going to bring foreign currency to deal with foreign currency. No. Foreign currency from another world. Praise God to deal with your issue. I'll use the same current, the same spoken word that you have in your house is the one that can answer you. The only difference between you and me is not because I'm a pastor. No. It's not because you're a congregant. The difference between you and me is that I believe in what I'm holding and you don't. It's nothing to do with office. It's right and faith. Have faith paid out. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Even you today, you can have faith in this word and it will pay. Praise God. You know, what I want to come to, I'm feeling like it's too big for the day. Praise God that I may not be able to finish. But I will. 
give you what a foretaste of what I'm talking about. Because when we've read from the, the church ages, now people hear about seals, trumpets, you know, ages, thunders. And when they hear those things, they feel like the message is too deep. No, the message is not deep. It's for simple men. Remember Christ when he came. The common men heard him gladly. The message of the hour is the simplified version of a supernatural God. The version of that everyone can understand him and comprehend him. But the problem is it has become too simple until that simplicity stumbles the proud. And they can't see him anymore because they were thinking you'd be a great thing. But he becomes so simple until they miss him a million miles. You see the point? So this age is like I was speaking. From Ephesus. I want you to see how everything that we have been reading, preaching is an expression of a history and account which has been put in an orderly form to bring certainty in the instruction that you have been given. Somebody say amen. Now I want us to open Revelation chapter 6. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now you have understood eh? that when we read Revelation chapter 1 it's talking about the church ages from AD 53 up to the present day Ephesus to Laodicea you get the point and actually these church ages like I said they've got dates that you can look at them to see, oh, even Martin Luther came in 1520 to 1750. Ah, Wesley came 1750 to 1906. That was the age he influenced and God allowed him to be the star of that generation. Are we together, friends? Are we together? Those are the church ages. When you read Ephesus to Laodicea, are we together? Somebody say amen. Now when you come to the seals, Revelation chapter 6, what does the Bible say? And I saw when the lamp opened one of the seals, I heard and it were the sound, the noise of thunder. Now one of the four beasts saying, come and see. Now one of the four beasts saying, one of the four beasts. These are the beasts you read in Revelation chapter 5. Chapter 4. You see them. Praise the Lord. Now he says, And I saw and behold a white horse. He that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. That is the white horse rider. He had a bow. And he had no arrow. Is that right? And when you come to chapter to verse 3, which is the second seal. He says, when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast saying, come and see. Which is the second beast? When you come to Revelation chapter 4, is it right? When you come to verse 7, the Bible says that the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a calf, and the third beast had a face as a man. 
and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. Verse 7. Are you getting that? Now, when he says the second beast, you already know what it is. The first one was a lion. The second was an ox, a calf. So now the second one, the Bible says, and they went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that said thereon to take peace from the earth, that they should kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. That was the second horse wearing red. And when he, had had, oh, when he had opened the third seal, I had the third beast now. And lo, a black horse. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And and I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts saying, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, and see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Is alright? That's the third. It was a black. Are we together? Praise the Lord. And when it opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, Come and see. And I looked and behold a pale horse. And his name that sat on him was death. And hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, and with death. And the beast of the earth. Ndarabere sanda bona mbidi tetana. Odzuro kayo dzinalawe upirufu. Uperechedzwa ngaba nga ngaba dzura bafu. Ka zvithu zvina zvashangoni. Chiti ewa manda auhula anga pfumo nanga ndara nanga bulayo nanga zvivanda zvashango. Now these are the first four seals. Hadi mapfundo mana uto. Now you don't want to sleep eh? Because your children in Sunday school, the small class, eh? they are learning about these things. So they will come home and say, Mama, please explain the white horse. You get the point. You, you must have an answer. Because the kids are now talking about these things. You, you see the importance now. You see why we have Sunday school as well. Is, is that we can bring the church to one thing. You, you get the point. You, you get the point. They are learning the truth at their level. A level that they will understand. And we are learning at our level. They teach dimensions on, at their level. We are doing them at our level. So when we go home now, you see how these things blend. And these things, we don't, we don't calculate them. Eh? Is that right? It's just inspiration. That when God is doing something there, He comes, He does the same. So you must observe and take advantage of it. Now, these are the first four seals. And these seals are happening here in this dimension. Are we together? And we have heard as we are reading the seals that there are four creatures that are involved. Is that right? And it was a lion. We see a lion there. A calf. We see an ox there. A man. We see a man there. A flying eagle. We see an eagle there. Now, I want you to blend these things and see the account in an orderly form. Now, when we're talking about out of the depths of Satan into greater 
opportunities. I was able to show you Jeroboam from Ephesus up to the depths of Satan. That was the dominating female, the Jezebel spirit. And Brother Balaam showed you that aimed at and relaxed it means Ephesus. Smyrna is bitterness. Harally married was Pergamos. And then Thyatira means dominating female. Are we together? And we saw the deeds of the Nicolaitans at Ephesus. There were only deeds. Is it right? Praise God. And when we came to Smyrna, we saw the synagogue of Satan. Are we together? And when we moved to Pergamos, it means thoroughly married. Now it was the church and the state getting married. That's where you find AD 325. A man called General Constantine. Praise God. Now, can I tip you? When I'm talking, don't think it's complicated. And say those that were here are the ones that you understand. I'm saying it in the simplest way I said it the first time. So don't lose appetite. Because you catch the connection. Now, AD 325, under General Constantine, church and politics, they were mixed together. Meaning thoroughly married. Now, that's when the deeds of the Nicolaitans became the doctrine of the Nicolaitans with Baalism now. Is it right? Now Baalism, we saw what it was. Why do we find it at Pergamos? Because Balaam is the one that forced Israel into a false unit. They were deceived into uniting. You remember what happened? They were taken to a party and they were made to drink and when they were drunk they were presented with sexy looking women and they committed adultery after the party and God never forgave them for that but it was a trap that Bala made they were intoxicated their senses were suspended and they fell into idolatry and God never forgave them for that and now in AD 325 the unbeliever the nominal Christian and the believer they were joined together by the same spirit that Balaam had in the Old Testament and it brought them into a union which was against the word of God. Somebody say amen. And observe when they were thoroughly married. Brother, that's where he says when the Nicolaitism spirit and the Baalism spirit come together, we have no choice but to enter into the depths of Satan, which is Jezebelism. Now, because when you come to Titaria, it is now the Dark Ages. It is a millennium about 900 and something years of darkness. You get the point? Where we are the dominating female. And that was the church. The Roman Catholic Church. It killed 68 million believers. You get the point? At the beginning here, at the deeds, there was no death. Is it right? Is it right? It became a bit bitter. In Smyrna, but when they were thoroughly married, church and politics, now they start to use political power to kill those that deny the doctrine. Is it right? Now that was in the dark ages. Are we together? Now, when you talk about the dark ages, this is history, brother. 606 to 1520. Is it right? Now, from there, that's the time. Time of Sadis. Now, many of you, you know these people now. You know Paul, of course. Few know Irenaeus, Martin and Columba. But you know Martin Luther. That's why we've got the Lutheran church. Now, listen carefully. Praise God. 
Praise God. Now, after the dark ages, Titaria, praise God, when all these things took place, we had a man that came out of Babylon, and that was Martin Luther. Praise God. He saw the marriage. This is not a correct marriage. Church and politics is the marriage of Ab and Jezebel. That's why we had the Jezebel spirit there. It was a marriage for political reasons. It was a marriage for strategy. Not divine. Are we together? Now when you see that, Martin Luther came out. And he said, no. You people, you are lying to us. And killing us. You said the people will live by the Roman Catholic Church. That's a lie. The just shall live by faith in the word of God, not by the church. And they came out of Roman Catholic and we had the church called the Lutheran. The Lutheran came out of that revival. You get the point? So when you meet a Lutheran, you must tell them their history. That in 1520, you came out of Catholicism because your father Luther praise God, he saw a wife are being eaten by a rat which they were calling the Holy Communion and Luther said you say God can be eaten by rats a church mouse you are lying to us this cannot be God you get the point so the Lutheran had a light and he was the star that led people out of denomination but when Luther left is that right another denomination started why because always people take a supernatural experience as a standard and they lose strength to seek the same God that brought that supernatural experience. That's what we call denomination. Can I bring that back again? Denomination is the people that gather around a truth a supernatural truth they gather around it they love it that is from God but it takes away the desire for them to meet with the God that brought that supernatural experience and they put a wall around that experience and they don't believe anything else that goes beyond that wall we call that a denomination People without experience but holding on to a real true experience. You see Peter, Mount Transfiguration, when he saw Christ being transfigured. That was a great experience. Because remember they thought he was a man. And one day, Praise God. One day Jesus said, let me take off the jacket. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Isn't it he was the Logos? The visible expression of the invisible God. So when God wanted to come on earth, as the Logos, he knew people would not comprehend him because he was too bright and great. So God said, let me look for a jacket. Mary, 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 can you sew a jacket for me? Mary said, it's okay. I need nine months to sew that jacket. Mary, for nine months, she sew a jacket and she gave G God Say, God, here is your jacket. Then God came. He put on that jacket called Jesus Christ. And he started walking on earth. God on two feet. Praise God. But because he saw people were not believing, he said, let's go up the mountain. I'm getting too hot now. I just want to get a bit of fresh air. And when Jesus was up there, upon the mountain, it's too hot. Let me take off my jacket. Brother, when he took off the jacket, there was a great light. Peter saw, John saw, James saw, a great light. What? That man is God. Praise God. Peter said, 
because of that, let us build three churches here. Three churches, God. One for Peter, one, 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 one for Elijah, one for Moses, and one for Jesus. Let's build three denominations. God say, hey, hey, hey. That's the nature of a man. He didn't even entertain that. He ignored. He said, Behold my beloved son in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. Not your tabernacle. Him, the word, I'm pleased to dwell in. Hear ye the word, him. Not that tabernacle you want to build. It's a denomination. You can't bottle God in a system. You get the point. Now, man does that. Somebody say amen. Men does that. They want a denomination around an experience. My experience with God cannot take you into the rapture. Brother Branham's experience with God cannot take you into the rapture. You need your experience. Why don't you learn from history? Luther's experience is not taking the Lutherans to heaven. It took him to heaven. But look at the Lutherans today. They're in such a mess. But they are around the experience of Martin Luther. And they are dead than death itself. You, you, you understand that? They smoke. They drink. They come to church. And all they are holding on is the experience of that man. They did not meet with the God of Martin Luther. If they had met with the God of Martin Luther, their operating system was supposed to be updated. And they will know we are in another age with different challenges. But now they are filled with viruses. Spiritual viruses. They can't get loose. You get the point. That's the hour that we are living in. That's denomination. Martin Luther came out. John Wesley then saw these people are holding on to an experience of Martin Luther. But they can't see God's progression and continuity. He came out as well. And when Wesley left, when he died, praise God, don't die also into sleep, praise God. As I'm saying, he died. I, when I say died, others were dying. <laughs> Praise God. When he died, they held on to that experience. Amen. They denominated a truth. Don't think the Lutherans don't have a truth. They have a truth, but not all of it. Don't think that the Wesleyans don't have the truth. They have truth, but not all of it. Then Pentecost came out. That's there in Laodicea. Because they saw people holding on to an experience. But when they went out, they forgot where others made a mistake and they denominated as well. Around a true experience. Speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Ghost. But when you denominate around it, you are denying the progression of God. Now Pentecost is around prophecy, gifts and all and that's all they want. Now do you see the itinerary here? This is the orderly account I'm just giving right now. Is that right? From Ephesus, you've seen to Laodicea. Somebody say amen. These are the church ages and the messengers. But now the seals that we read about. Now I want you to see how they blend. And then we are going to close there. Are we together, friends? Praise God. Amen. amen. All right. When I say close, everybody now. <laughs> So I'll keep on saying we'll close. Eh? And then you keep on waking up. Eh? We are going to close. Eh? We are going to close. Brother, we are going to close. Eh? Yes, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Are we together now? We are going to close. Amen. Now watch this carefully. What will bring certainty? 
in the instruction that you have been given is a close study of this orderly account. What we call a tradition is a truth handed from a man to a man. You get the point? It is not a lie. It is a truth. Like a greeting. It was a truth that you kiss the neck of your brother. But when it's given to you and the other, when it reaches the end, people are hating each other. We call tradition. It's a truth. Handed. But if people would have the experience with the God that gave that truth, their system of operating would always be updated. Because they know what about the, the God Muti. that gave the truth? We are Pango. Not the truth Musiningo. that was given by God. Yeah, now when they know that God, Muti. you speak to them directly. Muti. When I gave that instruction, Muti. I meant it in this way. Muti. And when you operate, Muti. you don't operate Muti. outside that truth. Muti. It will be fresh. Muti. Like Luke said, Things that are most surely believed amongst us. For us, it's a reality that's handed fresh from God to us. You get the point? That is the God that will help you. The God that speaks to you. Not the God that is that you are told about. Or the God that you read about. Now study closely. When we come to Ephesus, it was light here. You see it? A lot of light. A bit of darkness. The light was dying out until it died there in Titaria. You see it? Darkness. Darkness. And then Luther came out. Light began to come up again. Wesley. A lot of Christians repented in his time. You get the point. After that, the darkness of chaos came. Praise the Lord. Are we together, friends? Now, the first horse rider, Brother Branham says, now, now you're going to get the connection between these seals and the ages. Now, listen to what Brother Branham says. He says, in, in the re resume of the ages, conclusion, now, this is a good place to make an illuminating observation. How many believe at this part of the sermon? It's a good place to make an illuminating observation. That's a quote, brother. Now, this is a good place to make an illuminating observation. Praise God. All right. Look, the deeds and the doctrines of the Nicolaitans, the doctrine of Balaam, the teaching of the false prophetess Jezebel. Are you getting it? That's Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, and Thyatira. These four church ages. Nicolaitans, Balaam, and Jezebelism. Is it right? The prophet says, these three do not constitute three spirits or make three spiritual principles. These three are but the various manifestation of the same spirit as it goes from depth to depth. What it all is, is the Antichrist spirit of organization in its three various stages. Is that right? Are we together? Now the prophet is showing you Nicolaitism, Baalism, and Jezebelism. It's the same spirit. 
in different and various manifestations. Now these horse riders, the white one that you see, it is the Antichrist. We spoke and we showed you that he had a bow but no arrow. White is for deception. If the same spirit that was in Judas that came into the white horse rider, the same spirit that was in Christ came upon the believer. That which was in Judas anointed that horse. And that horse went in conquering is a writer. How? By the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Now when you see the white sword rider, you come back to Ephesus. You see the deeds of the Nicolaitans. Is a writer. Church manual. You must understand that the church of God is not run by the thoughts of men. The church of God is run by the word of God. The deeds of the Nicolaitans, they were adding the church manual creeds and dogmas to administrate people. Administrate people. To lead the people and govern their lives. Are you get the point? Praise God. That's what it is. Nicolaitism. Can I bring it clear? Can I bring it clear? I want to show you the Nicolaitin. A Nicolaitin spirit is like where you, the Muslims. They, they wear and they leave their eyes here. You get the point? You know, it's a very good thing that no man will see your wife. And a, a woman must not expose her body to any man. It's true, because your body is for your husband. So why do you need a miniskirt? Who do you want to show? You are not a prostitute. You are a daughter of God. And you, you are married. So it's good for a woman to cover herself for her husband. You, you get the point. But now the Muslims, they say, we only want to see the eyes. Now you see the adding upon the instruction and they create a ritual, a creed, a dogma to govern the people. Now it's a good thing that a woman is not seen. It, it appears good. But now the devil will not allow you to remain there. You will start to add also. Because you have already started adding. So you will now add other things. That even go beyond what God wants. So God doesn't need help. His word stands for itself. Can I bring that back again? You don't monitor a person to leave Christianity. You don't help a child to be a believer. This word is able to make a believer. If a person cannot be made a believer by the word, there is no hope for that person. So don't waste your time trying to devise means to make people Christians. You see the point? Ah, no, our children today, they, they can't come to church because of the television and all. Oh, so now we must make sure we bring the television and church and make them watch things the church you know so that they love god men trying to help god god doesn't need your help you get the point the message is enough the bible is enough it can make a rapture material as a man i can make you a religious person that will go to hell Yes. Hey. Yes. Hey. I'm a man. If I bring my own things, it becomes Nicolaitism. People think Nicolaitism is only on the negative. But no. uh, positive things. Sure. Hey. Mm. Hey. 
Now we need kitchen material in this church. Every dress must be made of kitchen material. It's people who are trying to do something good, you know. <laughs> yes. But they're adding upon the word. They're trying to help Malachi fall. Now watch what Brother Branham did. He preached the word. And the people became worse. And when they became worse, he did not add. He cried to God that God what's going on the more I preach the more they go astray but he remained upon that says the Lord somebody say amen you stay upon the word no matter what you want your child to repent pray for her show her the message don't go beyond what the message says that young girl will not repent for because of that mm. hey. sometimes she will become worse with, I don't want this message of yours don't, don't blame those kids sometimes it's the way the parents are doing they're trying to force it if they want to make it a Nicolaitine thing they're making it harder than the prophet made it the daughter said I don't want your message go to church alone leave me alone I think you know message parents that have children like that watch it here you get the point how I many remember Rebecca Rebecca Branham when she started doing wrong things sister Mida did not like it you get the point point? and she was angry and brother Branham came said Mida don't do it like that don't be angry at her and he says so what should I do look at her what she's doing she's not good love her pray for her and do the normal things you used to do even when she was good do it, do it even more. Good things. And when Sister Mida did that, Rebecca came back, she repented. But imagine if they wanted to be hard. She was going to be harder also. To prove them. So they be, she becomes harder. She will even come back pregnant. Because of the hardness. You understand that? So the word of God is able to produce choose a bride, the unadulterated truth of God. This message of Malachi 4, it has power in itself to change your husband. No, he's leaving me for small houses. What should I do? Find a sister trying to find ways to bring the husband home. At the end of the day, you start putting things in the meat. A believer! You think I'm talking about unbelievers here? A message believer cooking food and putting muti for the husband. Yes! So I want him to come home. It's too hard against me. Sister, the word doesn't need help. I'll tell the truth. You get the point? You want your husband home. You don't do anything outside the word. I gave you a formula last week. Yeah. Your mood is prayer. Pray for that pup. Father, I'm putting spiritual muti in this pup. This meat I'm cooking, Lord. This prayer I'm putting is the muti. More powerful than the one of a sangoma. I'm praying for this meat, Lord. When my husband comes back and eats this meat I'm praying for, you will never go back to that small house. That's the real way of doing it. That's the provided way. You get the point? Now watch what happens. When the Nicolaitan spirit came, conquering the lady through the white sword rider, white is the sign of purity to say I'm good. So it was good things that were trying to be done, but yet they were acting upon the word of God. Now watch what happened. God then raised a lion right here. What was it doing to combat that deception? Praise God. 
That is one of the living creatures that announced the opening of the first seal. It was a lion. And that lion was there to combat that deception. So that this church age under Paul's anointing may be able to have a remnant that will make it. Somebody say Amen. Glory be to God. Somebody say amen. I'm going to close now. I'm going to close. Glory. I'm going to close, brother. Praise the Lord. <laughs> the person who's sleeping will look aside to check who is it. All right. God bless you. <laughs> and others will wake up with an amen. <laughs> When you just say, don't sleep, say, praise God. <laughs> Pastors, they see things. Eh? <laughs> I'll be seeing it myself. Yeah. <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Somebody say amen. <laughs> now, do, do you see what's happening here? <laughs> this whole line. <laughs> are you seeing it? <laughs> Ephesus <laughs> and Smyrna. <laughs> it was under that anointing. <laughs> are we together? <laughs> the Nicolaitans. <laughs> the synagogue of Satan. <laughs> and God raised a lion anointing <laughs> to stand <laughs> against false doctrine. <laughs> to challenge it. <laughs> kick it away. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. They tested those that claimed to be apostles and found them not. It is a first seal anointing that many of the denominational people are using. Yes. Hey. Because they are wearing white. Mm -hmm. They have a bow but no arrow. And they are taking thousands of people to stadiums. It's a white yes. horse rider anointing. That's why you must understand. I'll show you when we come to the pain loss rider. Pain is not an original color. It's a combination of white, red, and black. It gives you pain. So this is the horse riding in our day. Is that right? So it, it, it brings all the characteristics. It can come with the trick of a white sword rider. But when now it's Nigeria, they start to bomb the Christians. It's a red horse rider skill now. Killing blood! You, you get the point? Sure, brother. It's the same horse rider. In places where they cannot kill with guns, what do they do? They deceive. The minds of men. Mm -hmm. Now, Pergamos now, Smyrna and Ephesus, you see, deception, lion. The red horse rider now. Praise God. Now it's changing. That's the second seal. Now when the second seal comes, it's persecution. No longer deception. Now why is it persecution? They're saying those who have rejected our deception. We'll show you. I'm going to show you. you think you're wise. We will kill you. Praise God. How did they manage to do that? Because where the red horse rider is, Pegamos, thoroughly married. Now the church and state were married. So now they were using political power to kill the Christians that rejected deception. Somebody say amen to that. Are you seeing the orderly account? Don't miss a step, friend. Watch it. Begin to kill. Somebody say amen. Many people were killed. But God rich in mercy. The same creature the living creature that opened the second seal was the anointing that will come upon the believer. The spirit that was upon Judas went on the wife, white, red, that which was in Christ, it came upon the believer and it gave them an ox anointing. The beast of burden. That could take the pain 
you know a cow, you just kill it. It's cold for that. Every cow, when it's in the crow, it knows its end is the stomach of a human being. So it's ready to die. It's its nature. You get the point. So the lion anointing could not combat the rest of the so God gave them a special anointing. Is that right? And then now they gave their lives. Kill us. If you watch the history, but the people were fed to lions. Mothers, fathers, children. They were put in an arena. You see that arena where you watch soccer? Yeah, the Romans used to use that. To kill believers. Mm. Hey. Yeah. Hey. Terraced things. Terraces. Terraces. That terraced stadium. That's right? People we put in there. Lions will be let loose. People will be ravaged. But God gave them an ox anointing. Oh, brother, you see them praying. Closing their eyes. Others running. Being marauded by those lions. But God said it's possible. For them, you get the point. Under the Pergamos. Praise God. Now, when that happened, it overlapped into Titaria. Now, in Titaria, I want you to see what happened. Now, the Roman Catholic Church began now to change its policies. Because remember, the more political and brutal they were, it made people not to believe. You get the point. Now instead, they said, no, let's cheat these people. Mentally. Instead of killing them. Now when the black horse rider came, now they began to describe the word in a manipulative way. Mm. They were all evangelists. They would put hell very close. And hell they put it very far. You know when an evangelist preaches, they put hell right here. You feel the blaze of hell, fire burning here. And when you think of hell, it's so far. That's how they started preaching. And after they did that, everybody was now scared. Oh, we will go to hell. We will go to hell. We will go to hell. And the Pope will send evangelists. You know, making shows how hell would be. And after they say that, we as the church, we have the power to remove a person, your loved one who died from hell, and put them to heaven. So you can buy a prayer and novena from us and we'll take your mother from hell. Oh, you, are, you are thinking, you are mesmerized. If, if there's a Catholic here, yeah, they still believe it today. Mm. Hey. There's purgatory. Purgatory. A place where they the people who die go. They believe in that. It's part of the apocrypha, the non-canonical books. Added books in the Bible. They believe there's an apoc a, a purgatory. So they begin to sell novenas. Prayers. And that is what made the Roman Catholic the richest organization on earth. Because at that time, they gathered all the riches by that black horse rider. 
point. You get the point. They were selling prayers. They became rich. You understand that? Somebody say Amen. And God took about that. That was famine, brother. Spiritual famine. Praise God. God took about that. It's the anointing of a man. The third living creature that opened for the third seal. Now, men came with his wisdom and cunningness. Now. People were reading now. Because remember, that time it was easy for them to be lied to. Do you know why? Because only the priest was reading the Bible. Everyone else would not read. That's why Luther made the first Bible translation in Germany. But before that, no one would read the Bible except the priests. So no one is qualified. If you read, you don't understand. You must be part of the Roman Catholic sect and then you are ordained a priest and then you read for the people. Somebody say amen. I'm not your pope. Now. There are people who make me a pop here. They only hear the spoken word from me. They only hear the Bible from me. If I don't read for them, they don't read. If I don't preach for them, they don't study. I'm not a pop. Let him pop. Back then it was the pop only. That's why they were deceived by the picture of heaven and hell. And they gave all their money to the church. They sold gold, they bought land. Today as we speak, America is not rich, it's poor. America is in debt. The richest organization, the richest man on earth is a bachelor. The, the pope. He's very rich. America is borrowing from home. America, you don't know it's behind the scenes. Who owns the Wall Street? The Wall Street, the bankers in America, the bankers. Private owned. Who owns it? Jesuits. A sect in the Catholics. Now, now you see what I'm talking about. It is the richest organization. Where did they get those riches? In the dark ages. Black horse rider. He took all the money and land. And you know land appreciate value. So God sent men like Luther. Salute. Praise God. God sent men like Wesley. Knox. Calvin. Calvin. These men were students of the, they were reading. God gave them an anointing to read. You know, there are people who read the spoken word. They have anointing of a man. Yes. They like to read. Eh? But if you don't mix that anointing also, with the eagle anointing, you will fall off on a limb. Eh? Because the letter alone killeth. The spirit giveth life. These men were reading, brother, until they understood that these people are lying to us. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say it that way. It says it this way. So they began to preach it right. They began to teach it right. Those Martin Luther, they were great teachers. The Wesley, they were great teachers. If you read the, the writings of John Wesley, those people were expounding the word. Praise God. Your spirit, John. If you hear what they wrote, you can see that God gave them an anointing. Things that you can't do today, they did it with perfection. Because God gave them that. Are we together? Now I'm going to close now. It's nothing to do with sleep. I'm closing soon. Amen. Now, the Pelos rider. Now, you see, when you speak about famine, sadis, overlapping into Philadelphia. Is it right? Now, when you come to the Pelos rider, it's death now. All the things, those three powers, you see, 
Nicolaitism, Baalism, Jezebelism, in one. Red, white, black, in one. That's why we say the lid of hell has been opened. The whole of hell is here. Because this is the final battle. Now these demons, all of them in diversity, they're coming to bring death. That's why we said people are dead is because that bear loss rider is death in our age. I'm sure now in our day I don't need to explain anything. Because in Laodicea you can see what's happening. But I want you to see what God did to combat that one. Because it's deception there. It's persecution there. Is that right? Put famine there. And go to deal with that. You gave the anointing of an eagle. That's why we say we are born in an eagle age. By an eagle prophet message to manifest the living word of our day. We have been given eyes to see way above, way beyond the dimensions can bring. We are not born to be earthbound, to fly up and down. We are not born to be earthbound like a lion, like a man, like an ox. We are born to fly where eagles can dare. Somebody say amen. Praise God. Now watch it, brother. That anointing of an eagle is the one that anoints the present believer to overcome the challenges of the hour. Amen. And it can deal with everything that you see up there. Because all the mysteries are revealed. All of God has been repulled again in the bride. And that is in Laodicea. In this age, you as an ego. You are in Laodicea, but not Laodicea. You are in Egypt, but not in Egypt. The Israelites were in Egypt, but in Goshen. Why do we say they were not in Egypt? Because when the plagues who hit the rest of Egypt, Goshen was safe. So you are in what we call the bride age. You came out of Laodicea, the Pentecostal age, and you came into the revealed word of your day, which is the bride age. That's why the climate of denomination cannot influence you. Because you are in another realm. Praise be to God. Somebody say Amen. Do you see what I was showing? This is what Luke was talking about. The birth of Christ up until his ascension. You and I we are born there. I'm talking about your earthly expression. Is that right? And then when you're born here death crept in and you were buried here in Thyatira. Dominating female. The church TV. died. That seed that was planted in Ephesus. Total darkness. It's right. And when it died, God brought a spring. Martin Luther was spring. That new life, except a seed is buried underground and dies, it abides alone. Is that right? So that seed that was planted, and it died and it rotted, it came out as a stalk at the time of Martin Luther. And then it grew to become a tassel in the time of John Wesley, Philadelphia, Philadelphia, and that tassel developed a shark, which is Pentecost. Is that right? Laodicea. And inside the shark is the seed that must come out. And what kind of a seed is it? The same seed that was planted in Ephesus. The same bride. It would be harvested in Laodicea. And when it is harvested, 
going to be raptured out of this world. So this is the account from your birth to your ascension by the grace of God as the musicians come. Praise the Lord. How many love the word? Vabranam says, the Lutheran age was the springtime. Same book, brother. The Lutheran age was the springtime. The Wesleyan age was the summer growth. Laudation age is the harvest. Is the harvest time of gathering the tears for the binding and burning. And garnering the wheat for the Lord. You see now the last three ages we're talking about. Defined here. And now, by God's grace, as you look at all these things, you must know with certainty, with certainty, with certainty, that the things that you have been instructed, they are true. Because seed must come back to seed. As it was at Pentecost, so shall it be for you and I. Listen to what the prophet says. Praise the Lord. Now, it says God is going to restore. Same book. The Lutheran age did not restore the church. It started a reformation. Are we together? God said he's going to restore. The Lutheran age did not restore the church. It started a reformation. The Wesleyan age did not restore. The Pentecostal age did not restore. But God has to restore for he cannot deny his word. This is not the resurrection of the church. It is the restoration. God will take the church right back to Pentecost of the beginning. Now notice Joel 2.25. It tells why we need restoration. The locust, cankerworm, caterpillar, and poundworm have eaten all. But the root and the small bit of the st- have eaten all but the root and the small bit of the stem. Yes. Now we are told that all these insects are all but one in the same in different stages. You see the Nicolaitans, Barlism, Jezebel, One Spirit, White Horse, Red Horse, Black, Pale, One Spirit. Even these insects, One spirit in different stages. Babam says that is right. They are the antichrist spirit manifested in organization, denomination, and false doctrine through the ages. And that poor little root and stalk is going to be restored. God isn't going to plant a new church, but he's going to bring his original planting back to original somebody say amen to that he's doing it as he stated in verse 23 by the teaching of the former reign next will come the harvest train or rapturing faith are you seeing the point now Somebody say amen. That is the restoration that we are talking about. So you can be certain if the same thing that was at Pentecost is the one that you've been given. Amen. If it's the same that you've been given, it should be able to do the things that they did there. Are you catching the certainty now? If Philip was able to be translated, holding what you're holding, what about you? If Stephen 
step could stand bold with the word until he was torn and dimensions would be opened. God would vindicate him. And Jehovah did the same thing. If Paul and Silas in the prison would sing, the prison bars would be broken. Jehovah did the same thing. I'm trying to bring certainty in the things that you are instructed. You are holding the same thing. What are you talking about, Pastor? What, what do you mean? All of God has been deposited into me. So what manner of people ought we to be? I can't be hungry when I'm having authentic money. Sister, brother, you've got authentic money. Money. Authentic money. You need to use it. Just be certain by the knowledge of the truth that has been preached. How many remember that old lady? He taught the child all the way to university. And the child became a doctor in India. India. So the old lady was old and poor. And this child was always sending some postcards according to her. And then they were having a picture of beautiful places. And then the old mother would look my child is alive. He sent me a nice picture. Put it in the Bible. Every month, another picture. Put it in the Bible. Put it in the Bible. For years, she was receiving pictures from the child. One day, the social workers passed by. They saw this old poor woman struggling. And they checked with the neighbors. The neighbors said, but that child, that woman has got a son who is a doctor in India. So the social workers came to inquire. Old oh, lady, what's wrong? How come you are poor? How? How? We hear that your son is far and he's rich. He said, yeah, but, hey, he's very rich. But it's like things are not going well for him. And I understand him so much. Because he loves me. Every month he sends me some beautiful pictures. Very beautiful pictures. But I'm sure when things get well, you will do something for me. What a mother. Praise God. They said, show us the pictures. When they opened in the Bible to see the pictures, there were checks, Father. That's the check. Indian checks. Check it, that's the ND. But the lady did not know that there were checks. She was a millionaire but did not know it. Living as a beggar and poor. But she didn't know what she was holding. The social worker said, no. This is money. If you go to the bank with this picture, you'll give you money. But see where it was hidden. In the Bible. Untapped riches. Everywhere. I don't know what you're working with all this time. And you are so poor that even demons may bite you. But hey, that one is struggling. Because mm -hmm. you are struggling. Demons, pressure, nothing is going right. You are poor in the spirit. Yes, you've got money, but spiritually you are poor. Until a social worker <laughs> called Malachi 4 was passing by. Hey, what's wrong with this girl? This woman. This woman seems to be struggling. Oh, we, we heard that there is a son. Mm. 2,000 years ago, he ascended. And they say he's in the highest, highest place. There he went up by a cloud. 
And they say that son is powerful. Say, but what's wrong? So when they come nearer, say, what's wrong with you? Ah, God loves me. The son of God, my son of God, he went up. He loves me. And uh, he sent me a book that I can while up time thinking about him. When I'm, but I know when things are fine in heaven, he will come back and help me. Say, so which book did he leave you with? There's a book I just read every day. Ah, it has good things, you know. I just read about, you know, people like Samson. You know, these things, they encourage me. Let's see the book. Malachi 4 came. Malachi 4. says, what? This is more powerful than an atomic bomb. This word can defeat the devil any place, any time, anywhere. What you're holding here is great riches. How do you remain possessed with demons? Holding this book. How do you remain poor? Holding this book. Confused. Holding this book. This is not a book of history. It's a living book. It has power. You can apply it. You are the richest person on earth. The son of God who ascended up the highest place. He's sending you anointing to quicken the scripture of your day. Untapped riches in the word. Sure. We need to come to that place. By the grace of God. Having seen this orderly account. We want to know. And be certain. If you can fix this. Of the things that we have been instructed. As we to generate to us all. Praise the Lord. We want to come to a time of prayer and allow this word to bring us to this state. How many believe that they have been encouraged to see that they are holding something valuable for all these years? Look. Look, look like William Branham. Sir William Branham. Amen. We want to sing living reality. How many believe it? God sent a promise. God gave a promise to you and I. In this last day, priests and kings, and forever we shall reign. Sing it with understanding now. We are following an eternal order. Way beyond. Not looks orderly account, but an eternal order. Christ manifested He in us. Oh.
Our natural birth brought five senses. Our natural birth. By, by our new birth. We receive the sixth sense. Say, the Holy Spirit came in us to dwell again. A true circumcision of the heart. Greater works, greater works. You believe it. Sing it with understanding now. We are the substance. The Logos. You are the faith now. Because faith is the substance. That's right. God. We are not on Mount Sinai. I'm not on Mount Sinai. But now rain. Father, from the dust, of the things that we are instructed. Praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you're right here this afternoon, you believe that Malachi 4 came in order to bring this eternity. He came to show you your origin that you can have restored your identity. Oh brother, sister, I don't know your condition. You know your condition. Luke understood. That's why he gave that account. William Branham understood. That's why he gave the same account. You must also understand that you can give the world the same account to bring people back to the origin and identity. And if you're right here, you're saying, Lord, assist me. Do what I'm holding today is a superiority complex based on the inferiority of my contemporaries. But I don't have substance. If it's required of me to present substance, 
have nothing to offer Lord but with this message that you have brought your offering substance please don't let me leave this place without substance I need the Holy Ghost. I don't want to grow through criticism of the denominations. They are out of my league. The league I have is the league of Joseph. Those are the people I must compare myself with. People like Jesus, Paul, William Branham. Those are my examples. People I must compare myself to. Not those who have failed, but those who are doing right. So assist me, Lord. If you're here, I want to pray with you. Just for a few minutes. You can raise your hand. And you can whisper your desire to your Lord where you are lacking. You know it. You don't need to tell me. You don't need to tell your neighbor. Just the person you need to tell is God. Say, God, I'm failing here. Help me. As this prayer is offered, change me. Please. He's here to change you. You can open up your Bible and you make you see that you've got checks. Thank you, Lord. Heavenly Father, we've come to the end of our service. And we have looked at this orderly account. The church ages, its messengers, the seven seals, and the anointings. These are things that we could have never known if there was no man with understanding that came to show us. Like Luke gave to Theophilus. William gave to us. And we believe, Lord, that these things are not given for entertainment, but that we can know the certainty of the things that we are instructed to do. The certainty of what happened. I want to thank you this moment in time for this church I believe you are the one doing the leading. You are the one guiding. And as I pray, I surrender myself before you. As I present these hands, they are not raising their hands to me. I'm just a man. I have nothing I have to give them, even if I had to. But you have something that you can give to these people. That's why they're raising their hands. They have confidence that the one speaking is not their pastor, but it's God behind their pastor. Yes. And for that reason, give them a blessing for recognizing. God, I pray. I pray. I pray, Lord that this church will never be the same again. Take us out of these things and let us mature, Lord. Grow in the knowledge of your will. In the knowledge of your purpose and plan. Help us, I pray. As a body, as individuals, that we can carry substance. Much has been spoken. And you know what they are whispering. Why they have raised their hands, they know their lives. I do not. But as they know, I pray that none may be left desolate. None may be left without an answer. Supply from the riches and glory such as your children require. Anction, the Holy Ghost, that they can overcome. Give us the ability 
to utilize the currency you've given us a foreign currency from heaven that is more value than anything that this earth can offer let us recognize let us utilize forgive us for laying dormant forgive us for laziness to explore your word and apply the scriptures forgive us for fearing when we are holding the greatest thing ever as if it is powerless forgive us forgive us may we grow in the knowledge of your word the simplicity that you are bringing men and women young and old we want to graduate into that state where this message may live in us that's my burden for this assembly Lord that after all is said and done what will I present to you a people with a code of conduct or a people that have met with you we have seen from Ephesus up to Laodicea now help us to develop a faith that will lead us into the rapture. Because we are in that hour where the bride is to ascend after a resurrection. Luke showed the birth of Christ, his death, his resurrection and ascension. We have seen the birth of the church, its death, its resurrection. Now we want to see its ascension in a moment and in a twinkle of an eye. Grant it, I pray. Forgive everything that is not of thee. Bless our families, our children, our loved ones, that we may be under the same umbrella and anointing for the night, for the day. We thank you, Lord, as we commit and surrender all in your hands. As I remember, leave and commend everyone whose hands is raised, whose heart is opened. I leave them with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we give a hand of praise. May the Lord bless you, saints. You are very patient. And God bless you for such patience. May he give you substance out of this teaching. That it will not be in vain that you sit under the preaching for this long. I wish you all the best as we give another hand of praise. We want to take a dismissal song. We've come to the end of our service. We'll meet again on Tuesday by the grace of God. Shall we rise to our feet? We have been born in an eagle age. How many understand the church ages now? The seals, the anointings. Don't worry, the last three seals will talk about them. The fifth, the sixth, and the seventh. But the sixth seal, we have spoken about it already. When we spoke about the mystery between the sixth seal and the seventh seal. No, we spoke about the sixth seal. And the seventh seal. Even the fifth. Yes. Remember the rejected Passover and the opening of the fifth dimensional prison. 
Do you still remember that? We refer to the souls under the altar. Is that right? I think how long? How many remember them? Praise the Lord. So I think we you know all the seals now. And the church ages. But we will go through them by God's grace separately. Now go read these things by the grace of God. As we put our hands together.
We are not called to be as bound. We've been born in an ego age. 